Hey guys, this is Pete from MyJewelryBunch.com. Today we're going to do kind of a uh, another ring. We're going to make a little bit of a fancier ring that we did with our basic ring. This ring is going to have a little bit narrower bottom shape so that the bottom of the ring tapers down to a narrower width than does the top. This gives our ring some interest and in dimension. Uh, adds some height and width to the top of the ring but yet keeps it comfortable at the bottom. Sometimes having a ring that may be five millimeters on the top and five millimeters in the bottom can be uncomfortable but if you make a five millimeter ring width on the top and maybe a two and a half millimeter ring on the bottom it'll be much more comfortable on the finger especially when you go to grip something you won't feel the ring or it'll wear better and uh, just just all around a better a better appearance. Let's start by going over to our objects window here and we're going to eliminate our plane. If you have one just hide it with the little eyeball. And the next thing we're going to do is hit shift A. We're going to add a mesh. Go down to torus. Okay so we've added our torus. Go over to the left side of the tools tab and just bring that property up. Now don't forget if you press any other key before you do that you won't be able to change the values of the torus. So just move that window up and make it a little bit bigger come down to the major segments we're going to change that to 64 on the minor segments we're going to change this to 48 and this is giving our ring a little bit better dimension and definition okay on the major radius I want you to change that to 1.2 and on the minor radius I want you to change that to 0.2 so that gives us kind of a nice band shape uh, perfectly round or tube shaped ring now, we can change the height of the ring, and by height I mean if we're looking at it from a side view, pressing 1 on your keypad. What we want to do now is kind of make this a little wider. It's, it's a narrow tube-like ring, so we want to give this some, some dimension. I want you to press the S key, and then press the Z key, and then bring the ring up a little bit so that it looks about like that. Press the mouse button and now we should have a band that's wider than it is dimensionally thick, thicker. The next step is I want to rotate along the x-axis, which is the red axis. We're going to press R, and then X, and then 90, and we're going to rotate the ring, press enter when you're done, to the, so that it's standing up. And I'm going to bring that up a little bit. We're going to zoom out, zoom in, now there's a little trick to this. It's very easy to make the bottom of this ring down here uh, narrow. How we do that is we use the tools. Uh, we're going to use this proportional editing tool. So what we're going to do is go into tab or go into tab, hit the tab key and go into edit mode. Press A to unselect all so that your screen should look like this. There should be no highlighted vertexes. Or, or in this case we're on the edge tool so there should be no highlighted edges. Press the 1 key on your numeric keypad and what we're going to do is we're going to hold the Alt key down and press one of these vertexes so that we put a rim around the diameter of the ring. And that would be the, the diameter of the ring this way, not the whole diameter of the ring. Now I can size this just this one little ring. If I hit the S key and then zoom in and out, you can see I'm sizing it, but it's it's making our ring look really funky and we don't want that. So hit the uh, right mouse button and cancel that. What we're going to do is we're going to come down to this little box here. This box here is proportional editing and we want to enable it. Now I want you to look at the ring and we're going to kind of come over this way. What we're going to do is we're going to size this now proportionately along the y-axis. And it's very important that you do it along the y-axis. The reason being is if I just hit S and size it, well, you can see what the proportional editing does. If you notice that white ring, let's cancel that. The proportional editing tool allows you to select a diameter of how much you want to affect your model. So in this case, if we press the S key and then use the scroll wheel to scroll up, or down, the area within that white ring is the area that will be affected. So if I try to size this this way, you can see that I'm able to adjust a bigger portion of the ring. If I scroll down, 
you can see I'm only adjusting a little part of the ring. So we're going to scroll up and try to encompass as much of the ring as possible, but only about three quarters of it. Now here's the other part of this. If I just hit the size tool and I size it down, let's say here, okay, and now I look at this from a perspective view, you can see the inside of the ring is no longer round. That's not good. We need a round ring. So what we're going to do is hit Control Z to cancel that. And we're going to hit, uh, scroll out here a little bit, we're going to hit the S key. We're going to get that ring around three quarters of the ring. But we're only going to hit S and then you're going to press the Y key and it's only going to scroll size it along the Y axis. So we can size it just along the Y axis only. I'm going to make it a little narrower, about like that come in here perfect now if we look at it pressing the one on the uh, numeric keypad you can see our inner shank is perfectly round and that's what we want <coughs> with that done press the tab key and enter into object mode and now what I want to do is make a cutout so that the inside of the ring is somewhat flat so we're going to add a cylinder so press shift a mesh and then go up to cylinder now I'm going to press RX90 and we're going to make that uh, somewhat, or we're going to rotate that along so it's perfectly round with the inside of our ring. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to size this so that it takes up a little portion of our ring. I'm going to move this down just ever so slightly, just about like that. So here's our band and here's our cylinder. Our cylinder is actually going to act as our cutout so if we look at it this way we can see that our band and our cutout will give us a nice smooth inside finish. So first thing you're going to do is select your cutout make sure there's a uh, yellow rim around it. You're going to press the shift key and then press your band. Now the cutout should have an orange rim around it and the band should have the yellow rim. We're going to go back to our Tools tab. We're going to scroll down to where it says Bool Tools, and we're going to do uh, where it says Auto Bool. We're going to do Difference. Now, if we look at our ring, the inside of this is nice and flat, and that's kind of what we want. I didn't add any dimensions to the uh, cylinder, and I probably should have, but you can keep practicing this and do it your, yourself too. So what I want to do next is give this a smooth finish. So go over in the tabs, in the tools tab, press shading. You're going to hit the smooth button, and you're going to see that it kind of smooths out the inside of that ring. Now to finish that smoothing off, I have to give this a modifier so that it gives the ring some dimension. So we're going to come over to add modifiers on our object properties. We're going to hit the uh, button to add a modifier. Over in the generate line we're going to come down to edge split. And there's our edge split. Now the great thing about that is it smooths out the model and it still gives us some definition along the rim. So now let's just take a quick gander at what this is going to look like when it's rendered. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We're going to go over and add a material to this. So I'll go over to the materials button. I'll hit new and let's give it a metal option and we'll make this yellow gold. Remember to take down the roughness because the uh, roughness will give it less of a metal look. So bring that down to like point, point 0.4 and then hit your render button and then take a look and see what it looks like. should look pretty good. Okay guys, there's our finished product in the rendering. You can see it looks like a really, really nice tapered uh, solid gold band and that's kind of what we were hoping for. I'm going to end this part of the tutorial here and I'm going to do the second part of this tutorial. Uh, first I'm going to hit the escape key to go back to modeling mode. I'm going to turn off the camera by pressing 0 and there's our model. And now I'm going to save this. I'm going to come to File, Save As and I'm just going to save this on my desktop. So look for your desktop function here and uh, give this a name like uh, Fancy Band 1 and then hit enter twice and it's going to save that onto your desktop. That way uh, 
if you do make a mistake, you can always reload that and get it back in here. Thanks for watching this part of the tutorial. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Any uh, Anything that you can do to help share this would be great. So if you think anybody else is going to like this video, please share it on, on social media. I could use uh, uh, the, the audience. I, I like doing this. So you guys have a good day, and stay tuned for the next part, which we're going to modify this band, and we're going to add some stones to the top. Thanks for watching, guys.